Let's start with your name. Give me some more reasoning on why your name was chosen. Okay. Uh, well, it's Lewis Rich, of course. Uh, two reasons. Well, one is because I like I like sharing knowledge, and uh, you know, in the original name of Lewis Rich, you know, the original creation is actually from uh, Oscar Mayer. You know, they feed the, you know, they feed the nation. So I look at like the name. You know, I feed the streets with with knowledge over beats and rhymes, that's all. Um, so mainly it's, it's more it's more deep in thought, you know, because I like to share knowledge and I love, I love learning and I love to teach. So when I share what I got to say and how I feel and I express my opinions and beliefs over uh, beats and rhymes, you know, I feed the streets. Louis Rich, why not? Now where are you from? I was born in Colleen, Texas. So I'm a Texas, Texas boy, Texas baby, military brat, but I'm a Texas baby. As Still you living see. in Colleen? No, actually I live in San Antonio right now. So, you know, had to come out here with the Texas on the brim, you know, so. How long you been living in San Antonio for? Uh, I've been in San Antonio since, ooh, off and on since 2002. And I left in 2005 and joined the military, so. You know, then I wound up going back. So, <laughs> are you still in the military? No, nah, I, I got out in two thousand eight. So, honorable yeah. discharge, general, general, general discharge, general under honorable. So, I'm waiting for them to switch it over to honorable. So, what's the difference between general and honorable? Um, well, honorable is where they just straight, you know, send you off. Like, say if you um, you served your time or. If it's a reason that they have to get rid of you and you don't really have any discrepancies, um, I actually had a few discrepancies trying to get out due to family situations and I felt my, my presence was more needed at home dealing with family than being in the service. So they gave me a general under honorable, which means it's just a general, it's like, okay, well, we'll just let you go. You know what I'm saying? But if you want to get it turned into an honorable, you're going to have to talk to the board so they can review your paperwork. So once they review my paperwork, then, you know, they'll decide if they want to switch it over or not. Why would someone like you want to get it switched over from general to honorable, or it doesn't matter? I mean, at first, it didn't matter, <clears throat> but now it's more so like, because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, the word I'm looking for, but it's more like, if it's switched over, I have a lot more opportunities you know what I'm saying? Like, um, I, I still get some some opportunities with it being a general under honorable, but if it's more of an honorable, it's more uh, more rewarding. So, you know, it's more like a, it's more like an advantage in today's society with an honorable than it is with a general. So. And you're talking about in like regular society, or you're talking about like military benefits or M military benefits, um, mainly the military benefits in general. Um, because there is some benefits that you might get with the honorable than you would with the general. So so you're currently working on the general status. Yes. I mean the honorable status. <laughs> yeah. You're general now, <laughs> you're working on the honorable status. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying, okay, trying now, to get it over. Now, give me, uh, give me a tour of San Antonio. For someone that's never been there before, let's start with the food. Favorite food spot in the city. Ooh, it's a lot of it's a lot of favorite food spots. Um, it really depends on what you would like to go for, if, you know, because this is so it's not segregated, but it's heavily populated and it's multicultural. You know, Mama Margie's is a pretty big spot. Uh, Chacho's is a pretty big spot. Both of these spots do serve a lot of Mexican food. Um, Texas Steakhouse, of course, you, you know, Longhorn Steakhouse. Oh man. Gosh, there's so many, but uh, it really depends on what you're looking for. So, like, say if you was to come out there and steak, of course, you know, Texas is known for steak, you know. So, so as you come out there, you'd have to hit up the Riverwalk and head to the uh, Longhorn Steakhouse and, you know, dive in there or the Lone Star Steakhouse. That's another one. It's a lot of steakhouses in San Antonio. Aren't those chains? Isn't Long Sto Long Horn Steakhouse a chain around the nation? It is, but the origination, you know what I'm saying, originated. <laughs> you know, you hit Texas, you got to go to one of the places that it was founded in Texas. 
So, um, and then of course Mama Margie's that that was started there. Um, what do you order from these spots? Uh, me personally, I'm I'm a burger guy and ribs. You know, so I I get like a double cheeseburger with the guacamole or something. You know, or or you know, say if I go to Mama Margie's or Chacho's. My favorite, my favorite thing to get at Chacho's, Chacho's is a Mexican restaurant as well, but they serve everything, not just Mexican food. But I like the King Kong Nacho, which is a, it's a, it's like the plate is a big ass plate like this, about this big, with nachos, with chips. And you got you got your queso or the regular cheese or the white cheese, and they like like just it's. It's swarm. So like your, your your chips, your nachos is just drowned in the cheese. And you have a choice of steak, chicken, or beef. And then the King Kong nacho, they'll give you three samples. You know what I'm saying? So like one side of your plate, you have your steak. The other side of the plate, chicken. And then another side, it'll be the beef. So I like to get that. And that's the King Kong nacho. So, I mean, I'm a nacho guy. So Now what about the nightlife? What are, what, let's talk strip clubs. Favorite strip club in the city? Oh, wow. Uh, man. The favorite strip club that I used to go to no longer, no longer exists was Perfect 10. Um, the Vanity Factory right now is a pretty big deal in San Antonio as far as the strip club goes. The Vanity Factory, that's the one that's popping popping damn near every night really it gives you it got you got your selection you got the strip club and the club scene like all in one so for people that aren't familiar with strip clubs in san antonio are these women full nude or is it just topless or what uh vanity the vanity factory is topless you know with the little pasties um i know at one point it was straight nude but you know Congress and all that, you know, politics kind of changed that up in the city. So, you know, they, they could have a little pasties and then, you know, you get the VIP room and that's a different story. So when you go straight in, you know, it's topless. So what about regular nightclubs? Favorite regular nightclub in the city? Uh, okay. Favorite regular nightclub in the city right now, uh, for me, I would have to say it's Ice Lounge. Um, Joe's Volcanoes is still popping. Let's see. Now there's uh, Miami bars popping right now. And then they even have an after party or after club, late hours after spot, uh, Divas. So, you know, like say the club, the regular club let out at two. You know, you say you don't want to go home yet. You know, you go over to Divas. is an after party spot and they don't close until like seven in the morning. So, you know, and they even cook there, so you can get like some chicken, some, you know, some chicken, fried fish, fried chicken. You know, they hold it down, so. But the top club right now, as far as what's going on down there right now, is Ice Lounge. So, not too many clubs can really compete with that right now. Every Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the only two days they ain't really popping is on Monday and Tuesday. Other than that, they're popping all week long so ice lounge you come out to san antonio i'll have to take you to ice lounge so everybody damn near anybody you could probably think of has been there has been there okay we talked about the food we talked about the nightlife any other spots you recommend someone first time visiting san antonio see do or visit while they're in town the alamo you got to go to the alamo learn the history that's downtown um you also got to hit up the river walk itself they have the river boats. You can actually get on the you can get on the boat, the little uh, nah, I call it the little boat, but it'll take you through the whole river walk. You know, ride the river and all that stuff. You know, so those 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 are the two biggest things for me. I say if you do come out there, you got to go there. The lingo. What are some terms or some phrases one might hear in the city of San Antonio right about now? Who, man. Like, man, hold up. They do that a lot. Uh, what else? It's really, it's really not much, like, really not much of a big difference. 
you know, everybody, the, the lingo ain't really changed much. The lingo's like everywhere. So the main hold up, you probably hear that a lot. I hear that probably more than anything else. What does that mean? Or when does someone use it? Say like, uh, so like you hear a song that you used to jam long, like back in the day and back in the gap, and then it comes on. Like say you, in, you know, you in the car wherever you at, and you hear that song, and it come on, and you know, you be like, man, hold up, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, like, damn, they brought it back. It's, it's like it's a good feeling type, you know what I'm saying? So if you hear it, you know, you hear somebody say it, they, that that's that's like it's excitement. And so I'm like, damn. Oh, say what? Nah, they don't. They they be like, man, hold up. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's my that's my shit. Or that's my joint. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, main hold up is probably the biggest, biggest one you probably hear out there. What about special events? Any special events you recommend someone uh, come to San Antonio specifically for? Like for example, in New Orleans, Mardi Gras is a huge ordeal out there. Hmm. Fiesta. What's that? Uh, Fiesta downtown. When you when you come out there, it's, it's almost like Mardi Gras. Just ain't no nudity and no bees and no no titties showing. <laughs> but uh, Fiesta is more so like a celebration. It's for like it lasts like for like a week. You know they be having parades. You know just a, a hall a all night all out celebration, party drinking. You know whatever whatever. But it's all it's all in the act of fun. You know so. That's like five days. It lasts about a good five days. It's always something going on. When they when they have a fiesta, it's always a, a event over here, event over here, but it's all tied in to one thing. Let's take it back a little bit. What type of student were you in school? <laughs> Whew, I was a troublemaker. I ain't gonna say I was a troublemaker, but I stayed in trouble. I stayed in trouble, man. Um, I was rebellious. I was very rebellious. Like I had a problem with authority. My mouth used to get me in trouble a lot, especially with the teachers. Um, my grades wasn't, I was in the middle. So I was average, um, but I stayed in trouble a lot. I was, I was always in, in school detention, after school detention. I done skipped a few times. So yeah, it's, it was, it was, oh wow. Graduated high school? No, I, ne I never did actually, man. I wanted to get, I actually wanted to get my GED. So yeah, so. College, but, tried college? I registered for college, but never went. They wanted to, it was a financial situation that never went, so you was, I was like, you know, whatever, screw it. I'll try again later down in life, you know, but then, I got more serious about doing the music. <laughs> when did the military come into play? Uh, the, mil the military came into play in 2005, right after I got my GED. Um, I was having problems at home. And then, you know, my mama hit me with that. Uh, you live, as long as you live under my house, you live by my rules. And I was like, well, I'm gonna just go ahead and go uh, talk to Uncle Sam and see what he talking about. And, you know, I wound up going. <laughs> Why? It Why was, the military? Well, prior to, to me joining the military, you know, I was a military brat, so I didn't see a lot and experienced a lot. I love traveling. So, you know, that was one way to get out the house. And plus, it was also a way for me to see new things in life and gain new experience and new knowledge, man. So I told my mom, you know, I'm going to join the service. She got scared, you know, the whole, that's around the Iraq and all that stuff was going on. You know, and she was worried. I said, you know, I'm gonna be cool, I'm gonna be good, you know. My first duty station that I wound up going to was in Korea, so I love Korea. So yeah, so I had to. Now how long did you do in the military? I did three years. Three? Three years. Yeah. Now, you got a, currently, as you mentioned before, your honorable discharge under general, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you could go back in time, would you have gone and joined the military or no? Looking back at yourself and your situation, hindsight 2020. If I could, no. Nah. Because, because everything I experienced then brought me to the point where I'm at now. You know, and I'm pretty sure 
if the situation would have been different there, I wouldn't be sitting here. I'd be too busy, you know, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, so. Now, what about th people thinking about joining the military, maybe watching this interview, um, and they're thinking, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. What's your advice to someone thinking about it? Um, it's all about what you make it. Um, you know, it does have good benefits. Like for me, joining the military was my last resort. Um, but it did, while I was in, it did help me gain a lot of knowledge. It helped me mature as a person as well. It taught me a lot. Uh, so for anybody out there that was thinking about it, I say the longer you think about it, the less, the less you'll be more prone to actually doing it. So, you know, you're going to do it, do it. Don't think about it. Just get it done. But also think about the reasons you're going. Do your research. Look at the benefits that you can get while you're in. Look at the benefits you get when you're out. You know what I'm saying? Always do your research on anything. You know, don't don't sit too long on something because it'll never get done if you do. So. Jobs you had growing up, if any? My very first job I had, I was in Germany. I was a grocery bagger. That was my very first job. And then from there, you know, came back to the United States. Uh, I had worked at a, a few restaurants. Bill Miller's is a restaurant barbecue place. I worked there for a little bit. Then um, I worked at Academy, which is a sporting goods store. I worked there for a little bit. Man, my job list went up. And then I joined the military, and then I came back home. <laughs> so my my job list is, my resume as far as work is ridiculous. Why so many jobs? Were you getting uh, fired from these jobs? Were you quitting? Um. Well, of course, with the, the bagger job, I wound up coming back to the United States, so I had to leave, I had to quit. Uh, Bill Miller's, um, I wound up quitting. I actually wound up quitting that to pursue something different. And then the academy job, I was a temp, so it was seasonal. So they had to let me go. Um, then there was a few other jobs where I wound up actually getting fired. Um, one job I quit. And I was there for like, that, that was probably like the longest job I had aside from the military, was uh, working at Wendy's. I wound up quitting that to pursue my music. You know, I got more serious about my music. You know, I was like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go in, you know, we're gonna make it happen. So I wound up leaving that job. What were you fired for at the other job? Uh, one job I was fired, they really didn't give me a reason. <laughs> All they said was they felt that I was a high risk. And, um, I didn't quite understand it myself, but you know, God works in mysterious ways, man. Um, but as far as the situation, I was a manager at uh, Dunkin' Donuts. So that was my first job as a manager. I did I did a hell of a job. You know, the, my employees liked me, you know, they, we was all cool. But the uh, owner of the store told his son that I needed to be fired because he felt I was a high risk. I had made one mistake. I had made one mistake and that got me fired, man. I had took the trash out and I wasn't supposed to go out the back door and I went out the back door at nine. After, when they say after eight o'clock, you're not supposed to go out the back door. But, you know, it, it was a lot going on in the store. So I took it upon myself and went out the back door anyway and took the trash out. So, they had took pictures and everything. So when they got the <laughs> when the owner got the pictures back, he told he told his son, you know, he, he's a risk. We need to let him go. Why? I don't know. But, you know, it happened and why aren't you allowed at the back of the uh store after eight o'clock? I think probably because the the area that we had just moved into, there was there was worried about theft. You know what I'm saying? So they put that rule out there, and I was like, eh. you know, I knew the area, but the area wasn't as bad as they thought it was. So, and then it was like, you now that was a rule they had put out for the whole store, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm the manager. Let me go ahead and just, you know, I don't think it'll be an issue. And it turned out to be a big ass issue, and they let me go. So, <laughs> what's the worst thing you put your parents through? 
Huh. The worst thing I put my parent, well, I probably seen my mother. You know, my dad wasn't in the picture for a while, so my mother, the worst I put my mother through was when I had, uh, when I got, when I went to jail. <laughs> I went to jail for doing some, some stupid stuff, running with the wrong people. So, and then, and that was probably the worst. <laughs> What's your message to the youth? Message to the youth, um, don't be so quick to grow up. Don't be so quick to grow up, man. Learn what you can while you can in the household of your family, your parents, you know, because it may not make sense to you when they telling you or how they telling you, but eventually when you get on your own two feet, you'll actually understand why your parents or, you know, whoever was household you in, you'll understand why they telling you what they was telling you growing up, man. Listen. Speak less, listen more. That is that is probably oh, education and also education. You know, don't don't give up on education. Learn as much as you can. Whether you in school, if you ain't in school, try to go back to school. You know what I'm saying? Try to put as much credentials under your belt as possible. So yeah, that that's what I say to you. I ain't gonna say say no to drugs because everybody got their own <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody got their own vice. So, if, you know, some people use that to cope with today's society, man. But the most I will tell, listen and learn. All right, let's talk music a little bit. When it comes to the music industry, what bothers you the most about it? What's your biggest pet peeve with it at this point, if any? Biggest pet peeve with the music industry? Hmm. Hmm. Probably at the fact that that there is a lot of people out here who have a lot of talent, and a lot of skill, a lot of know-how, but they don't really get much recognition for it. They get overshadowed by other people who probably don't have as much talent as them or much knowledge or much skill how to do this and how to do that. Um, that That's probably my biggest pet peeve is a lot of people that are made for this business get overlooked, you know? So, you know, there's, there's you know, you got a lot of BS that's, that gets thrown around as far as music, what they like to call music. And it's like, that's not music. If you listen to the fans, they tell you what they like hearing. In the industry, I don't think listens to the fans often. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they they don't listen, you know, because the people, the fans and supporters, are the ones who put money in their in their pockets and line their pockets. I think they should start listening more to the fans instead of making their own decisions. Do you see this changing anytime soon, or no? Nope. Nope. I, I, no, 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 no. I don't. I really don't. Um, it might be a breakthrough. You might have a breakthrough, but I don't think it's changing. <laughs> I mean, it sounds backwards. Why would a multi-million dollar business not listen to the consumers who is buying their product? I mean, from from what I can tell, they're listening to a following, but the following is not the direction that this following is going in is not the, it's like, I mean, okay, let me retract that. It's like, all right, you got a following, but the direction you're going in is not the direction that everyone else is going in. It's like you're breaking your own, your own path to build something different. And I, and I respect that. I mean, change has to come. Yes. But just some things, you know, it's like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it type, you know, in music it, itself, like the music that we all grew up on still has a purpose, still has meaning, but then there's a lot of music that's coming out now that does not have a meaning, a positive one at that, you know? So it's like, they would rather follow popularity than follow, you know, the reality of life, so. Top three things you need in the studio. Hmm, me. Some headphones that work, a 
mic and a good guy to sit behind the boards that know how to mix and master. Craziest studio story if you have one. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, crazy studio moment. This happened a while back. Um, I had wind up knocking this girl down. You know what I'm saying? I had this, like, you know, I had this little tenderoni or whatever, you know. We did the shag up. Um, I happened to go to the studio and then one of my uh one of my producers or whatever he was in a room with a chick but you know they didn't tell me they just said you know he in there doing his thing we're gonna go in here and you know just get to recording so by the time you know while i was in the middle of recording or whatever my partner he had came into to the studio but he had walked into the studio with the same chick that i had wound up you know what i'm saying she had wound up doing her you know we wound up doing our little thug deals two days before so when she walked in, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> she didn't know I was there. I didn't know she was there neither. So when she walked in, it was kind of awkward because he introduced the chick as his girlfriend. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it was like, you know, I want you to meet my girl. Woo, woo, woo. I was like, I had to play it off. Hey, yeah, nice, you know, nice to know you. Woo, woo. But it just turned out, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, yeah, man, this is my girl, you know, I proposed to her, you know, we about to get married, da 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 But I, you know, in my head, I'm like, you know, I slept with her two nights ago, right? You know, I, in my head, that's what I'm saying. But, you know, it's not coming out. <laughs> so that was probably the, uh, whoo, that had to be the top. That topped the cake right there. Did he ever know? Nah. I don't, still, I don't. Still I don't, to this day doesn't know? No, I don't. I don't even talk to the dude no more like that, man. But uh, I don't think. I don't. Did think, he end up ma marrying her? I think he did. I think he did. I ain't gonna even lie, man. I think he did. But <laughs> that that whole situation, you know, you know, I was like, damn, you know, I had she, she had me in her mouth like two days ago, bro. And I, you know, what I'm saying. <laughs> so yeah, that had to be the craziest that that. It was the craziest studio story for me, man. He walked in with the girl that I was with two nights before, and you know. Uh, What's the realest song you ever wrote so far in your whole catalog of music? Oh, man. The realest song I've ever wrote in my catalog of my music. I got a lot, man. That's. Hmm. That's a, that's a good one. Give us one. Probably royalty. I'd have to say royalty. What's that about? It's about relationships, you know. Being with somebody. You know, no, I'm not going to even use that one. That's a good one, but you know, I'm going to use forbidden fruit. Forbidden fruit. That one, that's, I, I, I actually, I just wrote that one not too long ago, but I, I'd have to say that's the realest song in my catalog because the whole song itself is about wanting something that you can't have. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know you with this person, but you know you shouldn't be with them. But you still, you know what I'm saying, you still with them. Or, or somebody, you know what I'm saying, wanting to be with you, but knowing that y'all shouldn't be together because it might damage whatever y'all got. You know, so I kind of, you know, I call it the forbidden fruit, which goes in the, you know, it's three different stories in one song. You know, the first the first part of the story is, you know, me linking up with a chick, you know, whenever I come out to the city and do shows, you know, we do our little thing or whatever. She wants to be with me, but, you know, I'm expressing to her that, you know, my music is more serious than, this, than trying to be in a relationship with you. So, you know, I move on past that. And she still wanna be with me, but, you know, she hurt on it. You know, the second story, the second part of the story it's me and uh, two females, but they sisters. So, you know, I, I wind up knocking down one of the sisters. You know, she tell her her older sister about me. So me and the older sister start doing some things. But then the older sister wants to marry me. You know, so, you know, she, you know I tell her to leave the, you know, leave the ring on the dresser for me. I come back, get her, whatever, whatever. You know, this one sister wants to marry me, but I want to be with the other one. And then, you know, so it goes into detail with that. And then the third story of the song 
it's uh me wanting to be with a stripper. You know, the last the last part of the song, it's a story. She a stripper. You know, I'm trying to. I want to be with her, but I'm trying to see if she want to be with me for me. Or is it because I got money in my pocket? So that that probably had to be the the real song I got right now. Risk versus reward. What's the biggest risk you took for your music career so far? Hmm. Coming out here. Coming out to Atlanta, boy. I had to. I pawned everything I had. Everything. TV, laptop, DJ equipment, everything to come out here. Had to pay off a few tickets. <laughs> but that coming out here, because I, I gave up a lot just to come out here this week. You know, so come out here to the A to see what it's like. You know, the first time coming out, too, I like it. But, yeah, that had to be my biggest, the biggest risk I took coming out here. What's the biggest misconception of you? Um, the biggest misconception I would have to say is that I'm a thug, gangster rapper, you know that type, and I'm not. I'm more of a all-around rapper. I'm a lyricist, you know. I and mean, a lot of people when they see me, I guess because of how how I carry myself, they they look at like, oh, you a thug, you a gangster, or blah blah blah. I probably to say that's probably the biggest misconception of them because when you hear my music, I don't look like how my music is expressed. So, but I understand it comes with the game. But either way, you know, I ain't, I ain't a thug rapper. I get, I, I'll get down with you on the thug stuff, you know what I'm saying? I get out there with you, but, you know, I'm not, I'm more of a humble person. I like to sit back and enjoy life. I'm not all about that, you know, running, tooting, toting, shooting them up all the time, music. Do you care what people think of you? No, I don't. Not at all. Because people are always gonna have your opinion about you, or well, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying. People are always gonna have an opinion about me or anybody, you know, regardless of what I'm doing. If I'm doing something positive, people gonna knock that. Oh, he doing you look. He think he better than everybody. He doing this. Or I'm gonna do. You know what I'm saying. If I do something negative, people gonna be like, ah, he doing this. You know what I'm saying. So people are always gonna feel some type of way about me. If I ever, if I ever put in my mindset about what people thought about me, I wouldn't excel in my music like I'm trying to, because when people feel, however they feel, that that holds people back if you're listening to what they saying. And I look at it like if you listening to what they saying, you ain't focused on what you need to do. So in all in all react reality, people gonna think what they want. They're not gonna stop me from doing what I want. What are your keys to success? Keys to success. Whoo. Um, knowledge. Read up as much as you can. I try to read up as much as I can about marketing. Marketing is the biggest thing I've been learning as the biggest thing for an artist, period. Not no radio play, none of that. Marketing. I mean, radio play is a good part of marketing, but not everybody listens to that radio station. You know what I'm saying? So marketing is like the major key to success for me. Marketing, promo, promotions, all that. Networking, uh, doing follow-ups, you know, keeping in touch with everybody that you do deal with as far as the networking and the business go. Networking, marketing, promotions. And staying true to your, your skill and your, you know what I'm saying? Staying true to your skills and everything that you do. Staying true to yourself. Is there a meaning behind your hair? Uh, <laughs> nah, not really. Um, I grew it out. I wanted to change it up. So, you know, dye the tips. I was actually going to dye a different color before I came out here. I was going to dye it red. Just wanted to try something different. Um, but now nah, it's just, hey, I'm going my dreads out. So. How long is this length you've been growing that we see presently? Uh, about two years. About two years. It's, actually, it's, it's longer than what it looked. I just, I just had his hat on. <laughs> like if I was to take it down, you, it'd be like down here on my shoulders. So, nah, it's, it's longer than what it looked. How long do you plan on growing it for? Um, probably to get like to the middle of my back. You know, cause when I'm, I've already I've already set it up for once I if I once I drop my first actual album, and if it, in in the process of it doing good, I'm actually cut it. So 
one person I know in the game that did it was Ludacris, but he waited a while. But he wanted, like, every time his success got higher and higher, you know what I'm saying, then he was like, you know, I'm going to cut my braids. So that's kind of the motivation I got, too. Like, the power's in my hair. <laughs> now, what is your opinion of guys with fake dreads and fake braids lately that I've been seeing? <sighs> Well, uh, what's that song, uh, young, uh, 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 OTG guy, OT Genius? What is it? Need to cut it? Yeah, that is that what they need to do? Cut it. That's, that is a disgrace. That is disrespectful. That is disrespectful to people who actually do have real hell. You know what I'm saying? They need to, they, they cut it. It's a shame. It's, 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 it's bad. You shouldn't be able to call yourself a man doing that. Because that's not manly. What what man puts fake hair on his head? I mean, hell, they the, the, the men that go bald, they you know they do they put chin hair up there. It's real. It's all real. That but that but that the fake the fake braids the fake mm, the dreads. No, that's women. Women do that. Stop that. They need to stop that. <laughs> Have you ever faced discrimination or racial profiling because of your hair? I have. But it wasn't, you know what I'm saying? They didn't, they didn't just come out and say it. It was more like the actions towards me. You know, I had my hair down. I was approaching, uh, I was approaching somebody to ask them about, you know, ask a question. And then the lady, you know, she didn't want to answer. It was a white lady, excuse me. I was trying to ask for directions. You know what I'm saying? She didn't, you know, you could tell her how her demeanor is and how I approached her. I approached her respectfully. You know, but her demeanor towards me was like, you know what I'm saying, as if I got a disease or something. She didn't want to want to speak or nothing. It just so happened the next person I approached was was uh, was also a white lady. She actually was more helpful than the lady in front of me. So, you know, I walked up to her, introduced myself. How you doing, ma'am? I'm just if you could help me out. I'm looking for some direction. She didn't. She walked right past me like I like I she ain't see me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and then when she turned around, it was like she she stuck her nose up to me. So I was like, well, okay, you know, <laughs> you know that was all. That was like the first time I've had to deal with that type of situation as far as having my head. But for the most part, I ain't had too much to deal with. Just I keep I try to keep a low profile. 